So the next uh, series of videos is once again another little change of pace from what usually goes on in the shop and that is actually going to be a renovation series. I've recently been spending a lot of time renovating, doing some fairly major renovations to a room in my parents' house. I've mentioned on the channel before that this shop is actually in their backyard and they let me use it for free and by free i mean it was a very generous offer to let me use the garage but we kind of have a deal where i do some sweat equity for them instead of paying rent so some months they cash that in pretty heavily some months they let me slide um, this project turned into a pretty major about two month or so job it's not technically done i still have some trim to do but it ended up taking so much time away from the shop that i put it on paul's now that it's livable again and i'll go back to it a little bit later once i catch up on my customers work but um i'm not putting the how-to tag on this series mainly because i'm not a contractor i'm competent enough in my skills to be able to do something like that and someone i know's home um, without any major issues, but it's not necessarily something I would want to be hired out to do in someone else's house. This is more of a, this is what job needed to be done and this is how I did it sort of series. But it should be a three part series. Um, the room had three major renovations, one to the wall, the floor and the ceiling. And I didn't necessarily do the work in the order you're gonna see it, but it made more sense to, to make those videos into chunks so you see each progress, uh, each progressive part um, in a series versus jumping all over the place. That also means as you watch it, you'll see finished parts of the room. So spoiler alert on that. But like I said, three part series, um, it's a little bit of a change of pace, but I like to do work like this instead of furniture. Sometimes it, it kind of switches it up. A common misnomer is that uh, construction and contracting is synonymous with, with woodworking and furniture building, and it's really not. So um, I do like doing things that are a little bit of a change of pace with making tables and that's pretty much what this is. You might not believe this when I say it, but the original job was to fix those messed up plaster parts in the room. Those yellow spots you can see where the plaster was peeling. Now, um, when my parents moved into this house, like I said, we're originally from Jersey. This room was actually a laundry room. There was a washer and dryer to the left of me in the video and they put the, my grandpa actually put the wood siding up and the wood floor. They always hated these fluorescent lights, but this is a low ceiling room. And like I said, the original job was to, to fix that plaster and my dad wanted to potentially get rid of the fluorescence. So the ceiling up above is actually on a pitch. So we knew there was more height in the room, but never really thought much of it. When I took out the fluorescence, I could tell that there was actually quite a bit of substantial space of, above this facade drop ceiling. And that was when um, we decided to go ahead and remove the old plaster. This is actually some sort of variety of rock lath. So it's almost an inch thick. It's extremely heavy. It actually chews up uh, the blades of my saws off very quickly and then we were going to have exposed beams so that was the, kind of the plan at this point so already the job was was snowballing um, to get this stuff down like i've said i've removed this stuff before i knew what it was i know how heavy it is so you could see that's why i'm taking it apart in pieces if this was drywall this job was, would have went much faster so you could see i'm kind of using a combination of a sawzall and some hammer and um, crowbar crowbar usage in order to get it off in chunks. If this was coming down in big sheets, it would have broken stuff in the room um, and potentially landed on my head, which I didn't want to happen. So that is how I pieced this down. And then I got rid of all the stuff. All this sort of work, you'll see I'll upgrade my dust mask as the job goes on. I start with a dust mask, I move to a little bit of a nicer dust mask, and then eventually land on a respirator, just because you could see how much is in the room. So there's actually insulation in the ceiling. This house is so old and it's mostly brick that um, this is one of the few spots where there is insulation. And when I took that down is when I saw the original brick behind it. Now we knew that that was going to be there because like I said, this was an addition, which means that wall was originally the outside of the house. 
But once I saw that was when the wheel started turning to expose the brick, and that will probably be the second video. But for now, I just took down this. This is not structural at all. This was all put up later down the line. You could tell by the timbers that it's not um, as nearly as old as the house. So I just took that down and you could see the original ceiling is up there. This was a one person job doing this. So what I did was I cut through most of the beam on one side. I was able to then hold it and twist it and kind of pull it out from its position. You could do this easy, uh, a little bit easier by cutting th all the way through, but I didn't want this falling on my head. Um, the electric in this room was a mess. It's amazing there wasn't a, f a fire. That's why it's so hard to get insurance on these older houses because DIYers through the years just do crazy stuff. There's not going to be a lot of electrical work um, in this video though. And then you can see I'm just moving down the room. There was a bunch of these rafters. I'm going to keep these. I use lumber like this pretty frequently. And you can see the old ceiling up there, which obviously since it's older, the, the beams are not um, spaced properly. So that was a nice uh, thing to tackle down the line. You can see the electrical there. At this point, the exposed beam ideal started to go out the window. Um, it was still pretty cold when I was doing this, and the room was just freezing without that insulation. So that was when we decided to kind of put up, put, put up some of the older insulation that was still in good shape and then some newer insulation and put up beadboard. So because these are wider, you can see the, the bats don't fit properly. So I had to put up one. You could see I'm using nails to kind of hold everything in place. And then with a the little strip, shove everything up in there. Some of them that didn't want to stay, I had pieces of bailing wire I used to temporary, temporarily hold everything in place. Um, I hate working with fiberglass. I'm sure no one loves it. it. I'm one of those people that it really affects my skin and makes me itch. I know some people it doesn't really bother them. So this was just a miserable, working above your head's already kind of a pain. So then like I said, um, beadboard was going up. I started with the, the far side of the room just to make my life a little bit easier. I have it shimmed out using some shims so that it has enough room for expansion. Once again, since this was a one person job, it was a little bit of a hassle, but I did end up making two jigs to make it a little bit easier. Um, you're not gonna see electrical in this video mainly because I didn't want people, my dad did the electrical and I've always been, him and I have always done jobs on the weekend. I've always enjoyed working with him. I knew he probably did not want to be filmed. I didn't even bother doing it. It adds time to be filmed and um, I'm not saying we did anything improper, but I feel like electrical is one of those things where you get a lot of people lecturing you about how to do things if it's not 100% to code, and that's hard to do in an older home. So I'm working around the vent in the corner. This will eventually get fixed. This is the vent for the stove in the kitchen, which is the room behind. Um, I didn't have time to make a cover for that. That might be a future video because I kind of have a cool plan for that. Someone gave me this cordless nailer um, a couple years ago. He let me use it and then said he was never going to use it so I could just kind of keep it. It was super handy for this job, but you can do it with an air compressor. So you can see these are my two jigs. One of them is just two scraps that acts like a little foot that holds up one end of the piece. This room's a little over 13 feet long. So I was using mostly 12 foot boards and they are a pain to hold, especially since the joists are not totally even. So uh, you can see I could prop it in there. And then these I got from Lowe's, they were pretty straight. I spent a lot of time getting straight ones because I knew this job was gonna be a pain. Some of them didn't work. So you could see I just have a triangle scrap and another piece of wood. If you uh, screw that to the joist and hammer it in place, it will connect everything. I didn't have to use the triangle jig on every one, just a couple of them, but it came in handy for those bowed boards. And this is pretty self-explanatory. It's very similar to laying a floor, just you're working on the ceiling, so it's a lot harder and more tiring on the arms. And I just worked my way down the room like that, staggering my joints. Once I got to the end, you could see I ripped a board to length and then I removed part of the tongue so that I could just pop it into place. And then obviously this room will need trim around all of the ceiling and whatnot. I haven't done that yet. Um, I actually don't know when I'm gonna do that, but like I said in the intro, 
I probably won't make a video of it because it won't be long enough for a video. We'll have to see how it goes, but I'll eventually, I'm sure, when I do the cover for the vent or, or whatnot, show the updated, updated parts. And then this was just two pieces, so once again I'm adding that one. The ceiling was pretty much done. I was pretty happy with how this turned out. There were a couple little gaps in my joints, which was mostly just because the chop saw I have isn't great versus my cuts were bad, but um, it turned out pretty nicely. So then up top here, my mom wanted to have a little ledge to put stuff on. She is a collector of all things, so any sort of added storage works. And with the thickness of the, the wood that's on the wall and the plaster that's still on that wall, you already had a ledge there. So all I did was take some of the recycled material I took out of the room, and I made a little ledge, and I could just tow it into those, those little uh, joists on, this, on the side there. And then I did that on both sides of the room. And then in order to fill in those pieces, I did want insulation there. So you, I'm for first I'm washing the ceiling. I skipped around a little bit in this video. The ceiling's getting shellacked mainly because I didn't want to sand in between coats. It dries really quickly. And mom, my mom did not want to put any sort of stain in the room to make it darker, which makes sense because it is a smaller room and all the walls will have wood paneling on it. So shellac, you can sand in between coats, and if this was a piece of furniture, I would, but since this is the ceiling, you're never going to touch it, so if it's a little rough, it's not that big of a deal. So I just, this was pretty easy to do, to put shellac on the ceiling. It looks great, it dries quickly. I also like the smell of it. I know some people don't. So I had a bunch of extra beadboard, because like I said, the joists weren't 16 or 24 inches on center, so there was a lot of little chunks left, and I decided to trim out the inside of those little cubbies. You can see I put a shim in there in order to have a nailer, and then I could cut these and cut the triangles up top. Like I said, this all needs to be trimmed out, so this is what it looks like at the current moment. The finish on those I've, is undecided. I don't think they're going to be shellacked. These might be stained just to match the wall a little bit better, but that's how I finish those out. So it's decorative and um, added storage. And then this is what it looks like. Um, the ceiling fan, I actually did film installing that, but I think my camera died. I don't have the footage. And I'm just pointing out above the closet because now it's an angled ceiling. There's a gap I'm going to have to fill in. All the trim at the ceiling I have to fill in. Um, I'm going to ma make a cover for that vent, like I said. But in general, this is pretty livable, especially with the light fixture and the ceiling fan in there. And that is what it looks like. 